States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment. As always, please keep in mind our first responders, first aid, fire, and our police here in Jackson, as well as uh, the military that served here and abroad so we can have a meeting like this tonight. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Janice Kisty, Jackson Township Clerk. Time is now 7.30 p.m. Welcome to the regularly scheduled Jackson Township Council meeting of October 27, 2020. Begin with a roll call. Councilman Bressey is absent this evening. Councilman Chisholm. Here. Councilman Fleming. Here. Council Vice President Kern. Here. Council President Zwicky. Here. Attorney Gregory McGuckin. Here. And also present this evening is our business administrator and acting mayor, business administrator and acting mayor, Terrence Wall. Uh, as clerk of this meeting, I publicly announce that in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been advertised in the manner prescribed by law. This statement shall be entered into the minutes of the meeting. We'll begin with uh, opening comments from the Township Council. Councilman Chisholm. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to remind everybody that next week is Election Day, and uh, you don't need to get out and wait at this point. Uh, it's a little bit different than normal years, and seeing as how the importance of what's going on out there in our state and our nation with all of the uh, current uh, upheaval and the pandemic this year, I would strongly encourage you to get out there and make your vote count. Thank you all for coming and get home safe. Thank you. Councilman Fleming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Councilman Chisholm said and do remember that we do have a drop box at the Ocean County Library. A very safe and efficient way to uh, bring your vote forth. Um, also remember that we do have an open space question on the ballot and that's very important for our township. Thank you. Thank you. Council Vice President Kern. Wave comments. Thank you. Thanks. Council President Sawicki. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is uh, the second reading of Ordinance 20-20. Uh, uh, assuming it passes tonight, uh, thanks to the efforts of Council Vice President Kern uh, working along with the uh, administration, uh, the town will have a, uh, eventually have a uh, second dog park in town, which I, I think was a, a great idea and a, uh, a lot of effort to get that to happen. Uh, other than that, I wait for further comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve executive session meeting minutes of October 13, 2020? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Aye. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Sawicki? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 19-20 is for second reading. This is an ordinance of the Township of Jackson, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey authorizing the purchase of certain vacant land designated as lot 48 in block 13001 as shown on the official tax maps of the Township of Jackson pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 40A colon 12-5. We will now have the public hearing on this ordinance. If you wish to speak on this ordinance, please come to the microphone. Seeing no one, move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve ordinance 19-20 on second reading. Advertise the notice of passage and approval in an approved newspaper as required by law. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Fleming. Yes. Council Vice President Kern. Yes. Council President Sawicki. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 20-20 is an ordinance of the Township of Jackson County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending Ordinance 16-15 to provide an additional dog park facility as an exception to Chapter 98-10 of the Jackson Township Code. We will now have the public hearing on Ordinance 20-20. If you wish to speak on this ordinance, please come to the microphone. Seeing no one, move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion to approve Ordinance 20-20 on second reading. Advertise the notice of passage and approval in an approved newspaper as required by law. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. 
Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes, I would also like to thank Councilman Chisholm for his help with this ordinance as well. Thank you. And Council President Sawicki? Yes. Thank you. We have no ordinances for first reading this evening. We'll now have public comment on resolutions only. If you wish to speak on resolutions, please come to the microphone now. Seeing no one, move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 357 R-20 is to authorize budget transfer resolution number one. Need a motion. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Sawicki? Yes. 358 R 20, certify review of the local government best practices checklist of calendar year 2020. So moved. moved. Second. Roll call, please. Okay. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Sawicki? Yes. 359 R-20, authorize the renewal of plenary retail alcoholic beverage consumption license 1511-33-021-003, held in inactive status by Antonio Romeo D. Santello for the licensing period commencing July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. So moved. I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Thank you. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Swicky? Yes. Thank you. 360 R-20, authorized release of maintenance guarantee posted by Jackson Storage, Block 4801, Lot 22, 400 North County Line Road. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. And Council President Sawicki? Yes. 361 R-20, authorized release of maintenance guarantee posted by B&S Home Building LLC and Kozik Enterprises LLC for block 19901, lots 3.01, 3.02, and 3.03, .03, Lakehurst Avenue. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Sawicki? Yes. Okay. 362 R 20, authorized release of the performance guarantees posted by Rodney Crossick for the block for block 22601, lot 4, 276 South Pope Chapel Road upon posting of the required maintenance guarantee. So moved. Second. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'll do second. Okay. Okay, Motion okay, thank a second. You. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. And Council President Sawicki? Yes. Thank you. 368 R 20, approve appointment of Terrence M. Wall as acting deputy tax assessor. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm? Yes. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Yes. Council President Sawicki? Yes. Thank you. May I have a motion for bills and claims? Second. Roll call, please. Okay. Councilman Chisholm. Yes, but abstain from BRI 18. It's loaded. <laughs> thank, thank you. Councilman Fleming? Yes. Council Vice President Kern? Abstain from vendor SUR09. Yes to the rest. Thank you. Council President Sawicki? Yes. Thank you. The consent agenda is one vote for all of the following resolutions. 363 R-20, approved Township Council meeting minutes of October 13, 2020. 364 R-20, authorize added DPW tax lien taxes on various properties. 365 R-20, authorize foreclosure under the In-Rem Tax Foreclosure Act of 1948 as amended and establishing the tax foreclosure list of liens to be foreclosed. A 366 R-20, approved treasurer's report for September 2020. 367 R-20, approval 
for the insertion of a special item of revenue and appropriation pursuant to NJSA 40A column 4-87 for the fiscal year 2020 bulletproof vest partnership grant. We have a motion. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Chisholm. Yes. Councilman Fleming. Yes. Council Vice President Kern. Yes. And Council President Sawicki. Yes. Thank you. We will now open the floor for public comment. If you wish to address the council, please come to the microphone and identify yourself. Good evening. My name is Dan Donovan. My address is 395 Wakefield Road. I just want to really just reiterate something. We were here on September 1st meeting. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember, there's a 40 year history of this piece of land we were trying to purchase from the township. Yep. My brother and my daughter was Andrew and they Dan Donovan. I just want to hand out one document to you guys, Mark, 40 years of Chapter 211. Just follow with me, is that okay? Can I approach? I'm sorry? I just want to hand out one document. When we had left the meeting on the 8th, we were pretty excited. We, we really felt that you guys were going to do whatever you could in your power to resolve this issue. Um, we left. The uh, mayor said we'd have an answer right away. We did get an answer. Greg uh, got a hold of me and said that you guys were not interested in doing anything with that land. He wanted to still retain it. So I thought about it. We discussed it with my brother. And we came up with another solution, which is to do a land swap. You see lot one on the page on the top left. Lot one has access to Bradshaw, which is still a current paper road, and also access to Lafayette, which is a paper road that goes out to White Road. That would make more sense for the town to keep for an open space piece of property than two, because two is what we do not own. The township owns it. Everything else in blue is owned by my brother. So I presented that to Greg, and Greg did tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, but he said it wouldn't be an issue with the individual behind the lot because a land swap, you don't have to notify a contingent, an owner that owns property next to it. So Greg said he would address it with you guys to see if you would entertain that to do a land swap for it so we can finally move forward, sell this land. And let, my mother's got to get out of there and my brother. So Greg, uh, came, sent me an email when I inquired about it and said that you guys were not interested in doing so. So the only thing I really want to ask you tonight is why? why? That's all. And obviously my mother would like, obviously, like to know why you guys can't help and take care of that. It seemed like you were well willing to do whatever it took to take care of it. As far as being in the legal grounds, and Greg confirmed it's, it's legally okay to do a land swap. So the question I have basically is why can't you do it? Well, I won't speak for the mayor. I don't know if you have his comments. But uh, yeah, I mean, in general, I'd say we've been on a um, pretty open mission about buying land, yeah. not not selling land. Yeah. Uh, it's what the residents of the town have told us they want us to do. Sure, uh, understood. And uh, this year alone, you know, we've purchased more land than probably the previous 10 years combined. Yeah. Uh, that that would be the, the main premise. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the, the mayor had other comments, uh, either uh, Business Administrator Wall or, or uh, our attorney might have his comments, but he's, he's not here to speak for it. Yeah. Well, we kind of got past the fact of trying to buy it, you know, yeah. so really what we offered to do is swap. Yeah. So uh, it's given you a better parcel of land to use in the future for open space. Well, I mean, how my, can you my, use open space between someone's land? Just, just a, a question, and, yeah. and I appreciate you, you yeah. bringing this. Um, why why can't you sell it without that lot? I mean, it seems because do you see where that building? This is a survey that uh, this was all part of the forty year thing I discussed the last time. Terrence has it, the mayor has it, Greg has some of this stuff. The problem was there was a survey done when the home was purchased in the seventies, seventy nine, and it showed the entire lot and structures, everything located to the right side of that. 
And then when it was done again in 2000, they had done one. They put the building that was permitted by Jackson Township to be added onto it was an old coop in 84, right on the Jackson land. So I can't sell, he can't sell it when it's on your property. You've got to demolish part of that building to sell it. You see what I'm saying? So if we swapped it, you pick up lot one, which gives you a more desirable lot, whether it's going to be a sale in the future for the township or it's holding it for open space. Because lot two really doesn't, there's no value to anyone but whoever owns the other ones or behind it. And quite frankly, behind it, there's not enough to build two acres for an industrial zone with that lot. And those lots are R1, which is odd. All those small lots are one, are R1s, but the, the main one is, a, is an industrial, which was changed when the commission came in. They actually, one, two, four, and all those were industrial for a lot of years. I don't know when they got changed to residential, but they were industrial. And the house was residential. That got changed to industrial then, too. But those other lots got changed back. But that's near and near there at this point. But it's useless to anybody right now, except for us, to be able to move forward and sell. And it's not like they went out and put the building on that land. Hey, we're going to just put it on Jackson land. It was permitted, done, the surveys were sent, and everything documenting that it was in the right space. Whoever did that initial survey, or possibly the second survey, someone made a mistake, because we both don't know. Uh, the, the land on the outside the border of lots one, two, and four here, is that owned by the town? No. 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 It's a so Mark Industries, developer. developer from Lakewood. Developer. A developer. Yeah. And what we do, I just want to be clear also, just so the council's aware, and Dan knows this because I talked to him, uh, the council has offered to consider purchasing their property. They're going to sell yeah. it anyway. So the township uh, had offered, uh, you know, tell us the price. Let's see if we have an appraisal. Um, the township may be willing to yeah. buy your property yeah. without lot two since we already own it. With the uh, house. And because um, the house is. We, we just did work. that with yeah. Rover Farms. Oh, did you? We yeah. bought a property that had, had yeah. a house on it. I think I read that a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that is definitely something we would consider. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if you're interested in that, I mean, we, we could move forward with an appraisal, right? Absolutely. And, um, and, and maybe, maybe it solves everybody's problem. Yeah. You know, because I, I'll tell you, I, 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 and, I, and I do feel for your concerns here. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have, we've been charged by the residents of the town to prevent overdevelopment in this town. And um, even a, a piece of land that would prevent further development. Uh, maybe we just want to. Maybe we just don't want to go there, Council President. I'm sorry. Um, I, for a couple of reasons, I think it'd be. You know, we have an open space question on the ballot. Let residents speak. Um, I think. Uh, well, so not not just because of certain litigation that's pending. I think. We okay. Need, well, need I'll let our actions for this year speak for themselves. Yes. Yeah. And and. Uh, but you know, there, there, there may be other reasons. Yeah. Um, but we are, as we've, we've shown at, uh, in, in previous meetings and, and through um, other open space purchases, uh, we, would be, we would be potentially open to uh, considering a purchase of the full property if you're interested. Well, let me ask you a question. You know, this is not a, to poke at anybody, but I started this simple thing, which I thought back last year. And here we are almost end of this year, still haven't really got an answer. Finally started getting answers, but it took a long time. How long is a possible purchase going to take to get an answer? That's the concern that you and my brother have. You, you want to answer that question? Mm -hmm. Well, if we agree on a price and assuming there's no contamination, um, you know, we're talking a couple of months. Okay. Because we, we, I do have buyers for it today. We just have to resolve this. So it's either we tear the building down and move forward that way, which I thought the land swap would actually help everyone because that lot one is going to be pivotal for whoever wants to try to, and to, to uh, build that spot because there's still not two acres there. If you sold that lot two, I don't think it still was two acres, but if you swapped it, it's definitely not. And well, it's also keeping that corner available for the town if you did want to do something with it, open space later. You know, so I don't understand why you won't just do the swap and be done with it. Please. Because it's not going to, either way, either way, it's not going to help or hurt the town. It's going to help well, us I, if I we think do that's, the swap. I, I think that's debatable, Dan. Um, I, I think that's a little bit debatable. If the township purchased it, depending on what funds we use, it may be dedicated for open space. It may be 
uh, fix up the house, it may be not. Um, you know, that's something the town would decide later. Oh, you uh, mean on the complete purchase? I'm sorry? You're talking about a complete purchase? Correct. Yeah, I'm still back on if you just did the swap. I don't understand why the swap. It's, I, it seems I, I, simple I, enough to me. I, I don't want, I'm not trying to oversell well, I think, uh, it. I think the township has indicated that uh, they would prefer, you know, not to do that. Um, they would prefer to, if it's for sale, then maybe the town will buy it. I mean, that's, if your goal is to sell it anyway, uh, yeah. it seems to me to make the most sense because yeah. this issue with Lot 2 is still out there and, and uh, you know, to be fair, n no taxes were paid on that land because it was township owned, so you never got a tax bill for that lot. Correct. Yet, yet you utilized it for 20-some years. So Correct. 40, 40. Correct. I'm sorry? Almost 40. Yeah, almost 40. Mm -hmm. So uh, the township would like to try to resolve it, and maybe that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, they've already told me to advise you that they're not interested in a land swap. So um, for the reasons I think you heard tonight. So I you know, still don't of, understand the swap yeah. because you're still keeping space. It's not like you're losing space. Well, that's, where, that's the only reason I'm saying I understand what your goal is 100%. And my solution lets you still have well, that goal. Well, if, if time's a concern, I mean, you just need to let us know if there's interest. And yeah. I, you want to comment? I'm I simply going to uh, indicate that if, if there is any interest in um, uh, fair market value transaction, then we should meet uh, tomorrow, uh, you know, towards the end of the week, whatever your schedule permits, okay. and uh, have a uh, discussion about that topic yep. if you're available. Okay. I, I can make myself available. Great. I just got to just confirm with my brother which direction he wants to go. So. Great. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we can meet this week. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you could be a historical. It's old. Yeah. We, we like historic. It's very old. <laughs> Okay. So, it, it it may may end up being a good thing. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Sullivan, thirty-one Kathy Court, here in Jackson. Um, interesting enough, I would like to talk about open space. Uh, the the ballot question is so important. And I just wanted to put it here out that there is huge public support from what I've seen from people I've talked to for the ballot question. And for those that don't understand, this is about preserving open space, preserving historic space, preserving recreational space. Uh, the open space would return to, correct me if I'm wrong, three cents on every hundred dollars, which was already approved by past voters. And during the economic crisis, was lowered temp as a temporary measure. And to be fair, you decided to go to the public and ask them to put it back to where it was before. And I think this is the best solution for everyone here in Jackson. And as we just heard, if if there is historic uh, homes to be bought, that would be great because we are losing our history. I am a, a history buff, and I see many historic structures torn down for large development. So I just want to say that uh, from what I've heard, the public supports this, and I hope everybody else uh, that hasn't thought about it yet and hasn't voted yet will also support the ballot question, local number one, for open space. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Nino Borelli, uh, 36 Winthrop Drive, Jackson, New Jersey. Um, good evening. Uh, thank you for filing a, a complaint with the State Public Board of Utilities regarding your service provider, Altice Optimum. Um, I was wondering if you have any updates about that? We've not received a response yet. Okay. Do you know how long it normally or usually takes to hear back from DPU when filing <laughs> you know, such a complaint? Um, it's an unusual situation, so no, there's no standard of what we would expect. All right, well, hopefully uh, the ratepayers of Jackson uh, will receive relief monetarily wise soon and or uh, consistent cable and internet service um, that we pay for and deserve. Um, I'm currently serving on the Jackson Zoning Board of Adjustment. 
So land use issues are of great interest to me. I want to thank you for your leadership in continuing to pass ordinances like Ordinance 19-20, successfully buying up land to uh, protect it from being built on and developed in Jackson and preserving it as open space. Um, these land purchases will prevent urban sprawl, of course, and will result in a lesser burden on our municipal taxes in the future and also with our services and roads in our town. So it's a win-win for all of our uh, residents in Jackson. And of course, you know, preserving and protecting um, historical sites as well would be included in that. So please keep the purchases coming. Thank you. Take care and have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Evening, Council. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Cheney. I'm the code enforcement supervisor in town. Some of you I know for a long time, some I don't know. So just want to give you an update. I know the past meetings there have been some questions about what code enforcement is doing in town. I'll just give you some rough numbers as of, uh, of this date where we're at in town. So this day we've written over 560 notice of violations of residents in township for various reasons. We've done 974 landlord registrations. We've done 280 rental inspections just on single family homes. We're at 370 rental inspections, that's the CCO, the multifamily hundreds of the apartments, duplex, stuff like that. Uh, and to date, we brought in $101,000 in fines into the township. So we've been extremely busy, and we still got two more months to go. Um, if you speak to the court, they'll advise you that we've gotten so busy that they actually have strictly days for code enforcement now on a calendar. They can't put us on the regular calendar. We're just that, we take up too much space. So we're definitely keeping the town hopping. Uh, there's been some issues about the Airbnbs in town, what's been going on. Um, several of them are still appearing on sites. There's been one in questions quite often. Pops up on uh, the BRB site as well as Airbnb. I did some research on it and they actually are in compliance. It actually states on their application, minimum 30 day stay is required. They actually have it on their application now. This was one of the first ones I've ever had in Jackson that I came across. It just took me been in town probably for a year and a half now. And the homeowner we've spoken to, she's very compliant. As soon as we gave her a copy of the ordinance, she already contacted them, had to change it on her website to put it to 30 days right away so she didn't get in violation. She was made aware that it's also, it's not just the rental, but it's also in the advertising. You have to follow the ordinance, staying it's 30 days. So she did that instantly. So, but this one always seems to be popping up when people complain about them. It's always just one house. But they are in compliance. Just, you know, if it comes up, they do have it on their sites, 30 day rental minimum. So this one seems to be a thorn in everyone's side in town though, so. I just wanted to touch base with town council on that. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me. Uh, yeah, th first off, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. I, I think uh, the council really appreciates you coming in and, and updating us on that. Um, just a, a couple quick questions. Uh, how many code enforcement officers are there? There are six full-time, including myself, and one part-timer. It's actually two part-timer, but the one part-timer is actually strictly working with the resale CCOs of the house through the building department, and just because can't, they can't keep up with the resale, so he's actually dedicated to that. And unfortunately, he's going to be probably resigning in the next couple of months due to family issues. So we'll be looking to hopefully replace that person with a full time just to try to keep them ahead of the ball. Because even now with them too, there's days I have to dedicate uh, one of my code enforcement officers just to help pick up the slack on them, especially if they're both out for some reason or they just get a heavy caseload. We actually have to help them out still. So it's just it's busy. And, and the, tip, the typical hours, are they Monday through Friday? Pretty much I have people that are willing to work uh, coming on a Saturday and Sunday, which we've been doing. We've been very successful in doing that. The guys, there's no overtime or comp, so the guys will, will work a weekend in lieu of a day off during the week that way, so it doesn't cost the town any extra money to do that. The guys like it too, because they can do stuff during the week with their family if they have to. So they've been doing that. We've been very successful in catching a lot of contractors, uh, tree services, stuff like that, working on weekends with no permits. Yeah. So it's actually been very, very good at that. Yeah, I think from, from complaints that we have heard from residents, it, it seems to be the you know the off hours like weekend type yeah. uh, complaints. And there's guys that live in town here. If, I, if something comes up, I get a call. I'll call her. Hey, take a run by this. Let me know what's going on. And they'll, they'll, they'll come out of their house at night and check on something without a problem. It, and just just to be clear, are those those folks are they regularly staffed on the weekends or is it? No, it's, it's pretty much almost every weekend. Somebody just doesn't mind coming because they get a day off during a the week. There might be a weekend a gap where no one's here for that weekend, but it's good because I don't I don't want to. to being a cop for 30 years, you don't want, you want to be regular, you're regular. <laughs> so you don't want them to pick up your patterns. So it might be someone on a Saturday, might be someone on a Sunday, might be two people on a Saturday, mm -hmm. which shocks them. We've had three companies that we've caught and we find, and they've actually said to it in court on record, 
what are you doing working on a weekend? You're not allowed. And the judges sat there and chuckled at her. Like, what do you mean they're not allowed to work weekends? They can work a weekend if they want to work. So, but, you know, we fought in numerous of them doing that. Oh, so. Is there something that would prevent staffing regularly for weekends? Uh, not so much, really. I mean, I mean, when the guys get the job, they get the most. You know, most of the guys that all work here are retired cops. So the mayor likes to got to have retired law enforcement. We're not afraid to dig into stuff, investigate stuff. You know, we have means of, you know, being a cop. I mean, you have other means of investigating matters that you a normal person wouldn't think about doing, but we think about it. We think outside the box a lot of ways. So it's very beneficial having, you know, most of the, most of the guys that are retired law enforcement. Right. And we're not afraid to go to court. <laughs> you can see <laughs> by the violations, we're not afraid to come to court. Great. So. Council, any, any other questions? Yeah. Um, you had mentioned that uh, you are losing a, one of the part-time One people. of the part-time guys will be leaving due to and family issues, yeah. You, you, the other person you're thinking of making full-time? Well, the other person, he can't work full-time because he's retired. It would, it would affect him. He's retired. He gets a military and a police pension, so it would screw oh, him up. Oh, to replace that person with a full-time? The other guy. So yeah. when my, my thought was if, you're, if the department is going in that direction, um, hiring two other part-timers that can only work weekends, May actually, you know, increase that staffing if that's being affected. But the hardest problem with that is the, the hardest problem with that. A lot of times, especially with the resale end of it, we're help, we're helping out so much. People don't want you to be in their house. They don't, they do it Monday through Friday because the resale. That's when closings are during the week. Attorneys don't do closings on weekends. <laughs> you know, so that's why the resales are done during the week. That's okay. why. And then, you know, and COVID actually put them so far behind the eight ball because they weren't going into any houses on the resales. So they're still so backlogged from that. And you know, there's days they come in with 15, 20 new ones a day coming in just for resales. And they're still trying to catch up. Even with the help they have, they're still trying to catch up. And with the one guy being part-time now leaving, you know, that's why I think it would be beneficial for that end of it to have that guy, the next guy hired as a full-timer just, just and dedicate him strictly to helping with the resales like he is now. And then also replace a part-time. Well, again, my, my thing was from your comments, what you had said earlier, just making sure we have additional weekend staff. Yeah, I just said that mostly the, the one guy that's leaving a part-timer, he strictly does the resales. He has nothing to do with the, the code. Okay. And even he, he has to fall under the code umbrella due to the, the civil service. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's not in my department, but he's strictly dedicated over there to the building to help them. Yeah. That's all he does. Thanks. So, you're welcome. Any other questions? Council President. Yes, please. Thank you. Just a couple of brief things. And, and thank you to Mr. Cheney for coming in today. I reached out this morning for Mr. Cheney to come in this evening, as well as the zoning officer. The zoning officer uh, um, had a uh, call with some of the folks that had some concerns regarding outstanding issues, and I believe they, uh, he was able to answer their questions uh, appropriately earlier today, uh, but he's also available to come to a subsequent meeting. And when we en enhanced staffing um, about six months ago or so, maybe it was eight months now, okay. uh, that was in consultation with uh, Mr. Olajars as well as Mr. Cheney. And basically, what, what we're looking for is simply compliance. We are, the, uh, the Township of Jackson is not seeking revenue. We simply are seeking compliance with the rules and regulations as set forth for every, uh, every, um, everyone fairly and equi equitably across the board. Part of the program when we enhanced the staffing was to have overlap for Saturdays and Sundays. Unfortunately, some folks, some, not all, most don't, but some do think that it's okay to do work without permits on the weekends. Yeah. It's not, it's illegal. Uh, and enforcement is in order. The, with the council support, we also refreshed the fleet. And Mr. Chain was integral in uh, ensuring that we were able to upgrade the, the fleet appropriately with very modestly cost, a, a modest cost uh, for escapes, right? Correct. And yeah. so we're uh, bringing, bringing that, that organization really to the forefront. <coughs> but again, we're sim yeah. simply <coughs> compliance is the goal, Question. not revenue. Yeah. But basically, our folks are working. Uh, at any time when you're violating the law, you may see a code enforcement vehicle uh, nearby. Yeah. And that, that's the goal, and we appreciate all the efforts. Yeah. Uh, Another aspect is when we're doing the, re the rental inspections, we're coming across so much stuff being done without permits, and we have to refer that back to the building department, which just piles more stuff on top of that as it is now. And a lot of times, you know, we'll try to get a rental, and some people are smart, they try to play the game, they try to get a rental inspection done before they have a resale done. So we're like, you know, we'll go to and we're like, we didn't even get a resale yet. What are you trying to rent it for? So we got to kick them back to do the whole process over with the, with the resale first. And we'll come across tons of violations. Some of the stuff is something that, you know, building department just like, no, you can get permits and they find them for it. Yeah. And they well, can get it done. You know, I, again, I, I really appreciate you coming and, and 
as Mr. Wall said, you know, and, and I'm sure he's, he's talked to you, I mean, we've had quite a few complaints over the last several meetings, and it's not, it's not during normal business hours. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know if we've heard a complaint about right. normal business hours and, and what you guys are doing. It, it sounds like you really Yeah, like I said, we've had, I had somebody come out Friday night and work. Yeah. You know, she, you know, came yeah, in late, worked I, I Friday night, if, and she worked if, Saturday. If the weekends could be addressed uh, more regularly, I think that's probably the biggest complaint we're hearing. Right? Yeah. So. Okay, not a problem. I appreciate the council support and everybody's support. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Seeing no one, move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can Who's I get a motion closed? to close? 